Sabo, chief of staff of the Revolutionary Army and the once thought dead brother of Luffy and Ace, was revealed to be alive in chapter 731 after being implied dead for many years. In the world of One Piece, this was a celebratory moment for the likes of Luffy, but in reality, the survival of Sabo and his presence in the story turned out to be a divisive topic that is still talked about even now. What are the repercussions of his survival? Are there issues with his reintroduction and presence in the story? Are there inconsistencies and plot holes as a result of this? My name is Chepizard, and join me as I examine the good and bad of Sabo's survival, the potential consistencies and the divisive nature of it that inspired so many debates. If you enjoy the video, please consider leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing as it helps the video grow and my channel grow, and I thank you for the support. We first learned that Luffy had a brother when we were introduced to Ace all the way back in the Alabasta arc. Prior to then, we had little to no knowledge of any of Luffy's family. From there, we would go on to learn a lot more about Ace throughout the course of the Impel Down and Marine Ford arcs, ultimately resulting in his death in Luffy's arms after protecting Luffy against Admiral Akainu's attack. Through the hundreds of chapters that spanned from Ace's debut to his death, there was little to no implication of there being a third brother to both Ace and Luffy. That's why when we almost immediately cut to a flashback following Ace's death in the end of Marine Ford, it left me perplexed that we went from the death of one of Luffy's brothers to finding out that Luffy had another brother when he was younger. I'm sure Oda had his reasons for keeping Sabo's existence quiet and waiting to introduce the character after Ace's death, but the shift from, well, Luffy's brother just died, here's another brother that died when Luffy was a kid, in such a short time span can be quite jarring. This isn't to bash the brothers' flashback, I quite enjoyed it as it added a lot of depth to Luffy and Ace's characters and in their relationships, and it explored the side of Luffy's past we knew almost nothing about. Learning more about the main character and what shaped him as a Luffy we know and love today was a great benefit to the character and story, but that doesn't mean it comes without its negatives. I I think learning about Sabo as another brother to Luffy and Ace at an earlier point in the story would have made the story of Marine Ford and Ace's looming death even more tragic. Knowing that Luffy had already lost one brother would have made Ace's demise even more shocking as it would leave the reader knowing that Luffy had lost both of his brothers, the two he was closest to in his youth. The timing of the flashback of Luffy and Ace's childhood extends far beyond just Sabo's presence, and it is a topic that I would like to provide its own video. But within the confines of this topic, I thought it would be worth mentioning that I feel there were benefits that would have come with introducing Sabo at an earlier stage in the story. It would have left me with a feeling feeling of suspense knowing that Luffy was on a journey to save his last brother, something he felt to do as a child. And when the realization came that he felt to do so, the horror we saw Luffy experiencing would have felt even deeper. It could have created even more of an impact where it seemed like Luffy had lost everything and was completely broken, leading to Jinbei reminding him of the friends and family he still had in his crew. I would have liked to have experienced the bond formed by the three brothers earlier on. It could have made Marine Ford even more compelling to experience as we watched Luffy venture out in a desperate attempt to save his last surviving brother. Oda has become widely acknowledged as an extremely talented writer and storyteller. He couldn't make a series as great and expensive as One Piece if he wasn't. But what's perhaps the thing Oda is most criticized for is the way he approaches and handles death in the series. In many anime and manga, when you see somebody die, they usually stay dead in the series. But death has a different meaning in One Piece in that we rarely see people die. Having people not die isn't an inherently bad thing, but the way Oda presents this is what draws so much ire to his writing. Oda has become infamous for not killing some characters for virtually no reason even after heavily teasing their death by putting them in situations that they should in no way survive. Oda will often have characters seemingly die and dedicate entire scenes to their death, only to reveal that they are perfectly fine and not dead. The way he so heavily teases a character's death, but never following through with it, is why fans of the series hardly ever expect characters to die, even when they are so heavily implied to have died. There are countless examples of this beyond just Sabo. Pell survived a point-blank explosion that was powerful enough to wipe out a town in a great sacrifice scene in Alabasta, only for Oda to reveal he survived relatively unscathed. This greatly took away from his sacrifice and the scene itself as Oda keeping Pell alive has seemed completely pointless ever since. There are plenty more examples to dive into regarding this, but it's better to stay focused on Sabo. Sabo wasn't a classic Oda example of pulling the rug out from under a character's death, but I do still feel he meets the criteria. He was revealed as a character shortly after Marine Ford, only to be killed in the very same flashback. There was foreshadowing to his survival up until the actual villain Dress Rosa. I remember when watching the implied death scene in the anime, I never truly believed Sabo died, but some did. Then hundreds of chapters later, we found out he had been alive the whole time as a member of the Revolutionary Army. But the very fact that he was alive, and what he had been doing that entire time, spawned another controversy entirely. 
When the Dristrosa Ark rolled around, Sabo located Luffy, who had been fighting as Lucy in the Dristrosa Coliseum, to reveal to him that he was still alive. We then were provided insight into Sabo's survival where he had been for the past 12 or so years. The obvious question to ask here is if Sabo had been alive for so many years, why didn't he seek out Ace and Luffy sooner? Oda wrote around this with a classic amnesia trope, which can be an issue in and of itself as it's primarily used for plot convenience. It's then revealed that Sabo had climbed up the ranks to become Chief of Staff, a high-ranking officer in the Revolutionary Army. Following the death of Ace, Sabo saw the story regarding it in the world newspaper and that was the moment his amnesia lifted and his memory finally returned. Some may immediately think that seeing Ace's face would naturally be a trigger, but if you dissect the events and the inward implications this has, some issues become apparent. The main issue here is, why did it take so long for Sabo to remember Ace? You could easily answer that with, well, he didn't see Ace's face or name or anything. That's the first inconsistency that arises here because after delving a little deeper into who Ace is and what he did during the years Sabo spent in the Revolutionary Army, things don't completely add up. Porcus D. Ace, after setting sail to become a pirate, obtained a low a devil fruit that would help him earn the name he became properly known as, Firefist Ace. Ace was that mediocre no-name pirate that was lesser known to the overall world. It was very much the opposite. After setting sail and entering the Grand Line, Ace immediately began making a name for himself as he forged his own path to becoming a prominent and renowned pirate. He earned a respectable bounty of 500 million berries, and the name Firefist became known far and wide due to Ace's escapades. But what made Ace even more renowned was the pirate group he was attached to, that being perhaps the most known and feared pirates in the world, the Whitebeard Pirates. Ace ascended to the ranks of the Whitebeard Pirates and became one of the top branding individuals under Whitebeard, becoming 2nd Division Commander. Ace's name may not have been as big as the likes of Whitebeard or Red-Haired Shanks, but he had rose to a prominent position among pirates, with many names such as Shanks respecting him. He did fights with the likes of the Warlord Jinbei and traveled vast parts of the world, including even Wano. Knowing Ace's standing in the world of One Piece, his bounty, names, the pirate group he was in, there is no doubt Ace is to be featured in many other parts of the world where his name would be uttered or his wanted poster on display. It's the very prominent position Ace was in that made it very hard for many people to believe that Sabo never heard or saw any mention or photo of Ace for all of those years. How could someone of as high a rank as Sabo in the renowned Revolutionary Army never see the name of Firefist Ace, the second division commander of the popular Whitebeard Pirates? The main criticism here is that people have a hard time believing that Sabo never saw any evidence of Ace before Marine Ford that would have returned his memory. But this is a double-edged sword that cuts both ways. The same could be argued that Ace not seeing any sign of Sabo being alive is inconsistent and not very believable. After all, Sabo was very renowned worldwide himself for rising to the ranks of the Revolutionary Army. All of this results from the classic and convenient amnesia trope used by Oda here that made Sabo not remember anything until it was too late. Not to mention, Luffy had become well-known himself before Ace's death, so some even argue that Sabo saying known sign of Luffy is also a plot inconsistency. While Sabo's amnesia and the circumstance of how his memory returned creates a few issues that are nonsensical and hard for me to make sense of, it's by no means the main topic of discussion that comes with Sabo's reintroduction to the story. You may already be familiar with this particular controversial topic. It essentially boils down to Sabo being an Ace replacement. This comes down to him being revealed as Luffy's third brother after seeing Ace die. Him being revealed to be alive makes it so that Luffy has a living brother once again. And him attaining the power of the Mera Mera Nomi, the devil fruit that had previously belonged to Ace, which in context of the story was written to be Sabo inheriting Ace's will, but in reality can be interpreted in a significantly different manner. So Luffy once again has a brother in a powerful organization, renowned worldwide for his name and strength, with the exact same devil fruit. It's hard to argue with the overwhelming evidence that Oda didn't intend for Sabo to mirror Ace to an extreme extent. There is overwhelming evidence that's hard to dispute that incorporates family relations, powers, and questionable timing. Naturally, Oda can circumvent some of this with his writing and context of the story, such as with Sabo wanting the Mirimira no Mi, did mean that a brother of A should carry on his will with that devil fruit. That works fine in context of the One Piece world, but as readers who can dissect and evaluate the story, it can be said that, to an extent, it was detrimental and removed some of the impact of one of the most important moments in One Piece, the death of Ace. If we are just going to give Luffy a new brother who is alive with the same powers, it feels part of the void that Ace's death left behind, which Luffy initially endured through his love for his crew in the iconic I Still Have My Crew moment. When we saw Ace die, we thought at the time it was the first time Luffy was experiencing true loss. With a flashback of the three brothers, we see the bond forged between Luffy, Sabu, and Ace. We learned via this flashback that Luffy had indeed suffered loss before, and we get context to how this event impacted and shaped him as an adult. Looking back, we can see how the implied death of Sabo affected Luffy. After enduring that loss as a child, Luffy wanted to grow strong to protect his loved ones so that those close to him never die again. We see the striving force at play at the Saba Odi Archipelago when Luffy, overwhelmed by the might of Kuma and Kizaru, sees his crew decimated before his very eyes. He's unsure if they're dead, but he's still helpless to stop 
stop what's happening. We see how defeated he looks and how weak he feels. This narrative continues through Luffy's tireless journey to rescue Ace. He sees the possibility of that tragedy he endured as a child, the thing he never wanted to happen again, repeating itself. The possibility that he may lose his last surviving brother. Luffy goes through trials and tribulations with an impel down and marine forward. We see how much he suffers through his sheer determination to save Ace. This makes sense knowing that he'd naturally want to save a brother, but with context of knowing Luffy's past, we know there's a little more to the story than just saving Ace. It's so that he doesn't lose a brother yet again. About saving his last surviving brother, as the terror of losing brother is presented to him once more, and he doesn't want to endure and experience the feeling of loss and helplessness he felt as a child. This time he wants to do what he couldn't do then and save his brother, but when Ace died in his arms, we know that Luffy is realizing that he again failed to help save the brother he loved, and having lost both his brothers, he feels isolated and alone in the world. It's this knowledge of Luffy's pain and failure on multiple occasions, and the massive realization he comes to that he isn't alone and still has people to live and fight for that makes his response to Jinbei's question of what he still has left so impactful. I still have my crew. Is Luffy accepting Ace's death, accepting that he has lost both his brothers, and that while he wasn't in a position to save Sabo as a child, and wasn't strong enough to save Ace in the present, he realizes he still has something to fight for and protect. Ace's death was a major shift in Luffy's character arc and development. That's why when discussing Sabo and the impact his survival has on the story, you also have to discuss Ace and Luffy as well, as the consequences are felt there the most. Oda has no doubt made use of Sabo's survival, as he maintains a prominent role in the story with seeing Emu on the empty throne and the erasure of Lucia. I'm confident that going into the future, Sabo will still have a role to play regardless of the controversy surrounding his survival. I discussed a little bit earlier about how I feel it could have been beneficial to have the brother's backstory a little bit earlier on in the series. And I completely understand the controversy surrounding Sabo's survival and how he was reintroduced to the story, and the consequences and inconsistencies that arise from that. I agree with several of those points. First of all, I'm not a classic fan of the amnesia trope. We also see it again in Wano with Big Mom, and it's just not a good thing or writing tool that I like to see very often in media. I also agree with others that Sabo and Ace not seeing any sign of each other in all those years when they were both very prominent figures in the world is also also kind of hard to believe. And the overall convenience of Sabo not regaining his memory until Ace had already died is something I'm also not a big fan of. There's just a whole lot of plot convenience that surrounds Sabo's survival and him being reached into the story. And there's also a lot of parallels between Ace and Sabo. Being Luffy's brother and having the memory Nomi are the two most prominent ones. Revealing that Luffy has a brother after Ace's death and giving him Ace's devil fruit, it can make it seem that Sabo is in a way filling the void in the story that Ace left behind. Now it's definitely a lot deeper than that, but I can definitely understand why some people would critique that. But I don't necessarily dislike Sabo as a character, I actually quite like him. It's just the circumstance that with how he came about that's questionable. Oda very recently has been using him as a great narrative device to drive the story forward and other parts of the world away from Luffy and his crew. He used Sabo as a method to save Kuma, which eventually led to Kuma coming to Egghead, showing us that the Elder Stars actually have the ability to transform for the first time, as well as Emu being on the Empty Throne. Seeing Lelucia be completely erased right in front of his eyes and relaying all this information to the Revolutionary Army, there's a lot of significant story progression coming from Sabo's actions and other parts of the world away from Luffy. Now we're seeing that the Elder Stars can transform and we're seeing what they look like with Saturn on Egghead, something we were first hinted at with Sabo back on Marie Joie, and I'm sure Oda still has massive plans for Sabo yet to come. Overall, I am a fan of the character of Sabo, and I do like the way he's being used currently in the story. It's just the way he was brought back into the story and the inconsistencies and impact it had that came with it that I'm not a huge fan of. But let me know what you think. Do you like Sabo? Do you agree or disagree with some of the things I had to say? Do you like how he was brought back into the story, or do you agree with some of those that critique it? My name is Champazard. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, as it really does help the channel and video do well here on YouTube. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.